welcome back. This is the Dirtbag Chronicles. I am your host, Brian. I'm sure you're getting used to my face by now if you keep watching episode after episode. And I just want to, yeah, absolutely. I just want to thank you for your support and pushing this message out. And uh, if you are suffering right now from addiction or not understanding who you are, I ask that you reach out to us. We have many resources that are available for free. It doesn't cost anything for you to reach out uh, and for us to give you the information that we have. We love you. Um, so today we have a very special episode. Well, it's very special to me uh, that I'm just so excited to share with you. Uh, the guest today, his name is Justin. And uh, Justin, we were locked up in Garland County, waiting to go Garland County Detention Center here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Yep. And that's where we met. And also, like, we were just waiting to go to prison. And so... Good transition, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's it's funny that once you start to understand that there are no coincidences... It's all like supposed to be. It's meant yeah. to happen. It had to happen, and all of these other things. Like, is we're we're sitting here today, and we're about to explain the spiritual movement that happened in our lives, and we're going to talk about higher power. Uh, you know, I think the topic of higher power is is not talked about enough. Because it's not understood. I agree. You know, it, a lot of people are like, yeah, you got to get a higher power. You got you to gotta move spiritually. Well, fuck, man. Like, people don't understand what higher power is or, or, the, or what the term spiritual mm -hmm. actually is. And so today, I think we're going to do a great fucking job at, under, at giving the understanding of, like, higher power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is, that's huge. You know, uh, in the program, they talk about step two of understanding that there is a higher power. Absolutely. That, that, that there is something out there greater than myself allowing me to be and to breathe and to do these things and to be the dirt bag and to come out of me <laughs> in the dirt bag and, and all of the bullshit, you know? So, uh, I first want to kind of go into uh, <clears throat> my journey and how you assisted me with that. And I think this would be kind of a good introduction for you uh, so that they understand why it's so important that I have you on the show. So <clears throat> uh, I've featured in It Podcast, uh, which is kind of what started all that. Shout out. And um, It Podcast, I kind of shared like, uh, that I read this book, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. If you haven't read it, go to it. It's amazing. It get it life. on the Audible book, uh, audio book. Get it. Go get the hard Dude. copy. I suggest the hard copy because you can actually dive into it and and read it when you're if ready. If you can't uh, afford it, it's you can go to YouTube and just Google it. Or, or search it in YouTube and it will play you the book yeah. with somebody else reading it. It yep. doesn't cost you a penny. Yep. So yeah. if you're listening to this, you can listen to fucking conversations exactly. with God. Just search it. You know, so search it. Look, look for it. If you want something different, you will find it. Mm -hmm. I can give you all the resources. I can give you all the tools. Uh, other people can give you the same shit. But if you don't do anything with that, that's your fault. That's it. So don't, don't torture yourself don't stay stuck in your situation or or in the moment of of suffering like that moment is just that moment you can jump out of it anytime you're ready and so here are the tools here are the resources for you to do so but conversations with god book one uh is all about uh understanding who you are mm -hmm. Uh, book two is understanding like the government mm -hmm. and the laws and the the society. Mm -hmm. And then book three, which is really cool and it kind of goes along with everything that's happening in the world right now yeah. is uh, like the universe mm -hmm. and what Neil Donald Walsh explains as H-E-Bs, which is higher evolved beings. That's right. 
and it talks about that that other uh, force, that other um, other um, realm, mm-hmm. and 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 aliens. Fucking aliens. Whatever they may be. Whatever they may be. We don't know. I think we put this dogma on on what it is and what it should be, mm-hmm. kind of like religion. Mm-hmm. But, Very uh, much so. Uh, 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 I think that the dogma that has been put out there has uh, closed people's mind to what that thing may yeah. actually be. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think they've created, I think the dogma itself has created fear about aliens and UFOs and and all this other shit, but oh, absolutely. But you know, if there wasn't fear, there wouldn't be love, and if there wasn't darkness, there wouldn't be light, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. So, <clears throat> but book three talks about that, and it's it's incredible. And then uh, in two thousand, man, I can't be for sure. I think it was two thousand sixteen. Neil Donald Walsh came out, and as he said, there was only going to be three books, but right. then he put out a fourth book. And the fourth book kind of went further into the the HEBs and the and the universal realm. And the fourth was called uh, "Awaken the Species." Awaken the Species. Yes, yes. I read that when I was in reentry in the reentry program. I ordered it. I was like, "What fourth book? Mm-hmm. Got to have it." And really, I thought I was ordering the communion with God, uh, but it that wasn't the one. So, uh, but uh, and the books will come to you. When they're supposed to. That's exactly right. You don't have to go really look for it. Like when you're ready for it, the universe is going to deliver. And that's what's really cool about higher power. Mm -hmm. But um, so you actually introduced me to conversations with God while we were incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And before you gave me before you gave me the book, you and I sat down. And I remember very vividly, uh, we were on the second tier mm-hmm. and there was a little table and it had like a chessboard and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and you sat down and your chair was kind of crooked and I was sitting there and I was like, yo, just give me the fucking book. I'm ready to read this <laughs> shit. I'm hungry. And, uh, you said, before I give you this book, I want to ask you a question. I was like, fucking shoot, shoot away, ask, ask away. And you asked me the most important question of my entire life. And it was, I mean, this question opened up every opportunity, every doorway, everything that I needed to know in order to develop and grow spiritually. And that question I'm going to ask you guys today is who are you? Mm. Who are you? I mean, that, that question is, so deep with three little words, Mm -hmm. you know, I think even the most illiterate person could probably fucking spell all three of those words. I agree. You know what I'm saying? So who are you? And when you answer it, just know you're answering it in a form of what you are. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, and I'm kind of probably going to spoil this for people, but this is what this is about. The answer to who are you is there's no answer. There's none. Because you can't get an answer. But that that question develops other answers Mm -hmm. within. It's meant to be thought provoking. It's like we were talking about earlier uh, in the very beginning. There was the light, right? Yeah. Well, before the light existed, what was it? Well, it was a thought. Whatever God thought it was. So he so thought. Boom, there was the light, created the this beautiful, life-giving, wonderful light that conquered the darkness. And that's what the purpose is. There's no right or wrong answer. We're right. Both, we both understand right and wrong are relative. So right. but there's no answer to that question. It's meant to open your mind, be thought-provoking, and start taking you down a path of getting to know yourself yep. and finding out who you are. You yep. know, we, we were talking about uh, expression and experience a little yeah. while ago. Uh that question takes you into the uh, the the who am I, the am I of things, and it takes you on a journey to find out who I am mm-hmm. so you can express yourself to the yeah. world. And that's why it's such an important question. I've introduced that book to multiple people, and I always try to, uh, you know, start with that conversation. Like, who are you? Because what's in that book is important. It changed my life. When yeah. I first came to Mine it, too. It, 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 it was something that just – busted my mind wide open and put me yeah. on a path to, to discovering who I am, you know? So when yeah. I ask you that, who are you? 
I'm not looking for an answer. I'm looking for you to look yourself in the mirror and find an answer. So when you take this information and you put it into yep. your mind and you start growing with it, it becomes something amazing. So there you become something amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. And you know, I did, I got fucking frustrated <laughs> with, I was like, dude, what you keep asking me the same question over and over. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? No, that's what you are. Who are you? Who are you? Right. But like that question was so important. It was vital. Mm -hmm. And like we said, like I said just a minute ago, like there are no coincidences. None. And so like, <clears throat> I believe that like before I incarnated into this physical, this physical meat coat <laughs> that holds my precious, well said. perfect soul. <laughs> well said. Like it, what it, like, like I believe that it destined that path for me to meet you mm -hmm. so that you could ask me that question. Mm -hmm. So that I could get an understanding mm -hmm. and start to discover who the fuck I am because I was so lost, man. man. I was so lost. Like, and like I had ventured off and like, you know, experience like with this so-called spiritual side of myself, <laughs> but like you can't even begin to dig into the spiritual side of yourself if you don't know who the fuck you are. Amen. So asking me that question just sparked the light that has always been in me. You know, it was just really dim. And, you know, like, so I'm a, I'm a PK and a preacher's kid. And mm -hmm. then like my, my grandparents were uh, evangelists within in the first assembly of God church. And, you know, I was raised in the religion. Right. You know, but like when I read that book, it's two different things. It religious and separated it for yeah. me. And see what the religion never taught me, whether that's Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Satanism, mm -hmm. whatever the religion is like, it doesn't really teach you or, or give you the answer of who you are. No, not at all. It actually confuses the shit out of the person trying to discover that. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I think Jesus actually answered the, that question of who you are really well. Mm -hmm. And it's when Jesus said, I am the light. I am the way. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. the way I am the truth, mm -hmm. you know, and there's no other way to the father except through me. And the way that like I got that, so like I did this automatic writing and the way that I got that information was by, by writing it down in, in automatic writing. But the way it was delivered to me was like, Jesus was sitting, standing there teaching his disciples. And he, in, in, in my writing, it said, it said, okay, repeat after me. I am the way mm -hmm. I am the light. I'm the truth. And so the disciples repeated, and like, this is just what I got out of my automatic writing. These are not facts. This is my opinion. This is what spirit taught me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this could be something you totally disagree with. And if it is something you disagree with, I'm glad because I'm actually uh, challenging you. Mm -hmm. At the very least provoking thought. Yes. And so you don't have to, dis you don't have to agree with this, but, and that's Okay. But maybe this will help you, too. But I, I see in my automatic writing, I got that Jesus was standing there and he asked his disciples to repeat after him. I am the way I am the truth. I am the light. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to the father except through me. Now, repeat it. And so that was like, dang, like I am. I am. You I are. am. And just like you just said, am I? Mm -hmm. Am I? And it's like, dang. So like that am I turns into the I am. Mm -hmm. And then that turns into the light and the truth. Experience becomes expression. Expression becomes what the world can see. The right. light for the world to see and, and follow if they so choose. Right. You know, that's, that's the only thing that you can do. We're sent here, I think, to, uh, to experience. I think that's the only real purpose that we have in our existence is to come here and experience whatever it is we so choose to experience. And in doing so, you're asking yourself that question, 
am I, you know, and, yeah. and, and as you experience that and you become the things that you want to become and you start to embody the things that you pursue, you turn that experience into your expression. I am, you, you, you are whatever you are and there's no right or wrong way about it. Um, I, I think that like, I refer back to uh, Christian uh, teachings because it's it's what I understand and, and it's our and culture. It's, it's yeah, yeah. It's, and that's how I relate to people when I'm trying to uh, explain what it is that I'm trying to explain because most people recognize with that. But I think that um, that is what it says that Jesus got on the cross and 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 uh, was crucified to give us a choice. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so it, it didn't say he crawled mm-hmm. up there. And wanted us to follow him and be exactly. You know, we have a choice. He he loves you. You are forgiven and you are are saved because he did what he did. I think that translates into coming out here and deciding who you are and what you want to be yeah. and expressing that to the world. Yeah. There's no right or wrong way about it. It's whatever you want to experience and express. That's who you are. That's what you're going to be. And that's what the world is going to see of you. It's perfectly okay to do that. Exactly. Yeah. You're supposed to do that no matter what side. I think that, you know, there's so much focus on the dark side of things and how evil, you know, we use words that, um, that, that strike fear in people's hearts. And I think that's to try to control and guide people. Maybe. Yeah. I think the intention is right when they're trying to do that. They're trying to uh, make you afraid to be bad. But if right. you don't go out there and experience all the wrong sides of things, then how are you ever going to be anything that you're supposed to be on the opposite side of that? You know, yeah. it's like the, the light in the dark, there was nothing but darkness and it was void. And until he said, let there be light, that's all there was. But how could he possibly have known he needed there to be light to give life and embrace and show love unless he had experienced that darkness? It yeah. has to be that way. So yeah. we have to accept it. That's part of who we yeah. are and that's part of how we grow. Yeah. And part of that part of that dirt bag lifestyle that we live, that is our darkness. Amen. You know, that that's where that's where we come out <clears throat> of the darkness and into this recovery or this light. And we accept what we've done. Mm-hmm. We without shame. go back and you're right. And we 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 remember those experiences because those experiences were so vital to our growth Amen. that it was like, oh, my gosh, this is who I am. Let the darkness turned my yeah. light on. Right. So how could I not appreciate it? How right. could I not embrace it? You know? Right. It was the purpose that, that I used. It was the transportation to my destination. You know, absolutely. I went through that darkness. I walked through and I've done a lot of things. We've done a lot of things that we're not maybe proud of. But if it wasn't for those things, I wouldn't be sitting here with the mindset and, 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 and the, the intention and the goals and all of the yeah. things that I have now that I didn't possess then. Yeah. I needed to feel that pain. I needed to go through that darkness. Yeah. And I think that applies to all kinds of like if I never experienced my darkness, how could I have known my light to have asked you that question that day to help you turn your light on? Right. You know, so. Yeah. It's incredible. It's incredible. It it really is. And like the journey and the the process is like like to you guys that are out there struggling. And if you're watching this, that means that your desire is changing. Yes. You know, and enjoy the enjoy the suffering. Mm-hmm. You know, I even think it says in the Bible and I can't quote it word for word, but it even says that to take your troubles and your in your trials mm-hmm. to take it with pure joy. Mm-hmm. Because that represents growth, mm-hmm. you know, and, and like I'm going through some shit right now, like where. I feel like I'm not growing spiritually. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not growing fast enough. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, I'm like, dang, I need to be doing this and I need to be doing that. And I need to, I need to get better at this. And, and like, when I was talking about this in a conversation last night, I was like, it it would just hit me like a ton of bricks. It was like, dude, I don't need to do anything. Anything. All I need to be is present That's it. and in this moment mm-hmm. and allow spirit to be spirit or source to be source or mm-hmm. universe to be universe or God to be God and allow that to work through me instead of me trying to work through God mm-hmm. and do things when I'm not a human doing, I'm a human being That's and right. I just need to sit still That's it. and be still and be quiet 
and use the two ears instead of the one mouth. <laughs> For sure. And listen with my heart instead of my mind and allow my higher power to develop the growth in me. And like once I had, once I had that understanding, I was like, Psh, okay, all yeah. right. You know, I think it. I think Allow. It, it, uh, it. You know, I, I hear people talk about. Uh, you know what's blasphemous and what's uh, you know a sin against God. And I think the only real blasphemy and the only real sin there is against God is not to trust God. It, it, Come on. To, to not just fully and wholeheartedly believe yeah. that everything is exactly the way yeah. it's supposed to be right now. I, yeah. I hear people say all the time, you know, and I've said it, um, uh, everything happens for a reason. I don't think that everything happens for a reason as much as it happens exactly how it's supposed to. There's a purpose in all things. Right. So when the, when you're going through these things, you know, you, you need to know what God is and how, how God works. Well, it tells you, I am. I am everything. So mm-hmm. God knows he's you, he's, it's everything. So everything that you are is God and everything that God is, is you. Mm-hmm. You're fully connected. So to think that God doesn't know what you need when you need it and how you need it yeah. is a slap in the face of what God yeah. is. So the way we communicate with God is through our actions, through our being, through, you know, our through, thoughts, through our, our thoughts. Yeah. So what you're communicating to God that you need is that lack yeah. of when you're restless, when you have anxiety about what you're not doing, and you're not just sitting back and fully content and appreciative of what you do have. You're focusing on what you don't have. Yeah. All you're saying to God is, this is what I want. You're expressing anxiety. You're expressing lack, and you're asking for that in return. Right. You're, uh, like we were talking about earlier, you're like a Wi-Fi yeah. Beacon, yeah. you know, you're, you're 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 shooting this energy out into the universe, and every time I say that I don't have this, well, the universe thinks that's what you want because that's what you're expressing. Right. I must give that you more, lack. more, more, more. Oh, let me give you more lack. Yeah. Let me give you more anxiety. Let me give yeah. you more problems because that's what you're expressing. Yeah. And when I stay back, it's one thing I've got it written on the wall for my kids to read every day. Uh, you believe with your mind and you're justified, but you confess with your mouth and you are saved. What that means to me is, well, let me let me stop myself for a second. What what I know is God created us in the likeness and image of him. Mm -hmm. He put in us the Holy Spirit, which gave us discernment. Mm -hmm. The devil doesn't have discernment because the devil doesn't have the Holy Spirit within him. Right. Mm -hmm. So how does the devil attack us if he doesn't know what's going on with us until we confess it with our mouth? He doesn't know what to do. So right. if you confess with your mouth all of these things that you don't have, here comes yeah. to attack that. Yeah. And that's the experience that you're going to have. Right. If you sit back and say that I'm grateful for everything, even if you don't have that thing, right. you, you're expressing to the to the the world, to the universe, yeah. abundance. Yeah. And that's what the universe is going to bring back to you. Yeah. So you kind of have to step back and just be grateful even when you don't have anything to yeah. be grateful for. And that's what you're going to end up running into. You know, yeah. What we put out into the universe, we're going to catch up with. We're going to have that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Jesus, Jesus actually explained in prayer that when you pray, mm-hmm. you believe it with all your heart. All your heart. You believe it. Believe it as you have it already. Mm-hmm. And, and that goes to like the law of attraction. That is exactly the you law know? of attraction. And so and, and there's no <clears throat> other way. I mean, every religion uh, uh, teaches that, mm-hmm. and and every religion goes on and on and on and on and on about it. But really, if you can just comprehend that one little teaching that Jesus taught, mm-hmm. when you when you need something, mm-hmm. which it, we've already discussed, God already knows that you yeah, need you don't it. Need anything? It's already on its way right. to you. So when you when you believe that that need is already met. Mm -hmm. And, and I did this for a while. Like, uh, so I I just kind of went through this thing about prayer and I was like, okay, so if God knows everything that I need or Mm -hmm. everything that I desire or everything I want or everything I, I have to happen, or if God already knows that, why am I asking for it? Don't have to. Uh, Well, instead of asking for it, I go into a, a state of prayer that I confess with my mouth, mm-hmm. okay, and I say, God, thank you for repairing my relationships. That's right. God, thank you for 
supplying me with enough money to pay my bills and take care of myself. God, thank you for fixing my car. God, thank you for taking this cancer away. God, thank you for doing this and doing that and providing this. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful for all of this that you're doing and that you are going to do and that you have done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, like I start my day off and it's hard to, to stay in this routine, but I start my day off with sending a gratitude text. Mm -hmm. Like one of the first things I do, I get on my phone or I get on Facebook and I get on messenger and, and whoever God puts on my heart that day, I go into that and I'm like, yo, bro, I just want to tell you, I'm so grateful for, for you being a part of my life and, and that you, that you have just, you know, motivated me to stay on this path or whatever that is and whoever that is too, that's very personalized when I talk to them. And I don't just say, yo, bro, thanks. Like I actually <laughs> dig down deep right. and I say, okay, but you're proud this is what I am thankful for. You showed me how to be a man or you showed me how, re how important it is to stay clean or you showed me how important it is to be patient. And what that does in the morning, first thing in the morning, is that creates that, that, that grateful flow, that gratitude, and it flows throughout my entire day. And then you put that forward onto everything. And then that that's person's the like, dude, that. this dude is thankful yeah. for me. Like, what am I doing? I'm not doing anything special. And they see their Yeah, you are. Like, so then they take that and then they pass that on to the next exactly. person. And then that person's like, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. Why are you kissing my ass? Or why are you, you know, what what do you what do you want from me? But then it like really triggers that like, dude is really grateful for me. They may not receive it immediately, but right. I guarantee you it sparks right. something inside that is a, uh, it's, you know, I tell my, uh, I try to teach my kids all the time that um, everything in existence has energy that is measurable. There is a device Absolutely. that you could put a rock on and literally measure the energy in that rock, mm -hmm. you know, so you are broadcasting energy all the time. All day. So what you put your energy forward onto that will absorb will absorb it and go forward into the world and express you through your energy placed on it to the next thing that it encounters yeah and that's a, an expression to the universe of who you are see something comes in it and it and it it meets that object that you put that positivity on you are expressing through them to the next person this beautiful positive light energy and that just keeps on flowing can yeah. you imagine if we all decided right now today that the only thing I'm <laughs> going to do is to put positive energy forward into the universe. And if I see a situation that I can't add something to, I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to put anything negative on it. I'm not going to take anything away from it. I'm going to add to it or nothing else. And I'm always going to come from the heart mm -hmm. because God is love and nothing else, right? Yeah, nothing If it's else. not of love, it's not of God. Right. Could you imagine how fast we could change the world? Yeah. If we just decided that I one I mean, it would thought, be instant. Instant. I mean, all uh, world hunger, uh, world peace, uh, all our wars, hatred, uh, yeah. racism, uh, sexism, uh, everything that divides us, if we would have that one thought mm -hmm. all together and believe it with all of our heart, mm -hmm. boom, world's changed. Done. We got a perfect world. Exactly. You know, but it won't happen because there's people out there that one, don't believe it, that that can happen like that. And two, don't want it to happen. I don't necessarily know that it's that they don't believe it. Um, I know that human human behavior is uh really simple um we're, we're really really simple minded so when when it comes to a person changing they see a thing in the in front of them that they want to change to mm -hmm. they get this fear because mm -hmm. they need to know that the reward of changing to that thing is either as good as or greater than the thing that they already have even if the thing that they already have isn't that great so you have to push that fear aside. Fear is something that there, there's only two human emotions at the end of the day. Yeah. There's fear and there's love. Yeah. That fear is so controlling. And that's, I think that's where the devil lives. I think that's whatever the devil yeah, is, whatever, whatever the, the devil is. is. Yeah. I think that's where the devil, what the devil is, where the devil is until you can convince yourself that there's nothing to be afraid of, that you're going to have everything that you want to have and everything that you need, no matter what, because God is really real and really providing that for you. Yeah. 
until we decide that and conquer that fear, we're not going to be able to get there. And there's people out there, like you said, there's people that don't want us to get there. Right. Because, you know, we have things like money and we live in a capitalist society. Yeah. It's in their best interest for their billions of dollars to keep flowing in, to keep yeah. people fearful because they keep buying those yeah. products and they keep doing what it is that they tell yeah. us we're supposed to be doing. Yeah. As a salesman, like when I, when I was selling, I'm not a salesman now, mm -hmm. but when I was selling uh, uh, products, like what I would try to, to really hit on is I would try to create a fear. Yeah. Be like, yo, your bill is about to go way up. Right. You need my shit. Mm -hmm. And like at that time, like I didn't understand what I was doing. And, you know, it's feeding off fear. Like mm -hmm. it, the, 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 the market for anything feeds off your fear. They create a need and a lack of that, that you don't have. And then they feed off that. And I think that's what, what the devil does too, but you pronounce that, mm -hmm. you know, when I ask, when I'm selling something and I ask them, uh, you know, how high is your bill or, or, or what, what isn't good about it? You're telling me what I can feed off. And that's, that's what it. we do with our, our thoughts, our negative thoughts and our, our negative speech and our self-talk. Like I'm not great enough. I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not far enough in my spiritual path. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, that's what I'm telling the devil or whatever that is, you know, and the, and that energy is starting to feed off. Oh, OK, so you're struggling spiritually, mm -hmm. huh? Well, we're about to slow this process way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, fear, man, uh, fear will make you uh, have tunnel vision where you can't see anything outside right. of that. And you think that that's the only thing that exists. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, that's the difference between like love will back you up and it will let you see everything broadly. Mm -hmm. The possibilities that this is not the only thing that exists. It's just what I can see right now. Yeah. The devil doesn't want you to see everything broadly. He needs you to stay within that tunnel vision and only see that yeah. thing that he wants you to see. Yeah, that's where so, his control is. That's yeah. it. That's how that. that and, and I think that that's been used on more than one level yeah. to control an entire race of people you know if we could back up from that tunnel vision and see what love could give us all that bigger picture if we just started right now yeah. like we just said it would change the world overnight like yeah it, there would be no yeah in, uh, the, in hunger. a there would single be no, moment but, yeah, yeah and, you know and it's but we you know what fear again has kept us to this you know everybody wants to think uh, wants us to think that if i give that then i lose that mm -hmm. you don't lose anything you gain something yeah. everything that you give you'll gain that back it, yeah it, it's told to me in, in in the teachings that i believe everything that you give will be brought back to you what yeah. sevenfold or something tenfold like that? tenfold yeah. so you know but people they're too afraid yeah to actually commit to that because they can't see the reward of that being as good right. as or greater than what they already have so they just stick with the devil they got you know yeah not yeah. realizing that we're really keeping ourselves kind of insane, yeah in our society but... and in this day and age is like instant gratification mm -hmm. like ooh like i mean damn like it's even got down to like our fast food like oh man like i mean i ordered chinese last night and i was like dang it's going to take 55 minutes for it to get down the road like that's not fast enough or you know but instant gratification is like is what uh, us dirt bags too what we struggle with Big time. like that's why we hit licks mm -hmm. because it's instant boom instant. like we get that money or we get that high or mm -hmm. or we get that pleasure somehow some way mm -hmm. and it's all that instant gratification and so I think that is a big deal with that. Yeah, your brain produces adrenaline, yeah. and cortisol, and all that kind of crap yeah. when you're going through that. Right. We, we start to uh, think that that's what we want. You know, right. that that's part of uh, of being the addict and living that whole right. lifestyle. And it's kind of hard to 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 want to give that up. You know, when when this thing that comforts you and it it produces everything that you feel like you need is there for you. Why do you, why would you want to give it up? Yeah, you know? it's a very yeah. hard decision to make. It's uh, once again the fear of. Seeing that thing as being greater than what yeah. you already have so that you yeah. change, you know, it's, it's a big deal. It's hard. And, um, I think that we're talking about the self-talk. People probably think I'm crazy all the time if they pay any attention to me. Cause I, and I'm always telling my kids, you know, talk to yourself, positive affirmations, this, that, and the other. Yeah. I'll be driving down the road in, in my truck talking to myself, you know, uh, and I, and I say things to myself like, uh, your life is not falling apart. It's coming together. You know, yeah. there's no problems in your life. Only things that you don't understand that you have to maneuver around or obstacles that you need to get past. You don't have problems. I think that um, 
that's important because I believe that our subconscious is where the Holy Spirit was put in us, you know, mm -hmm. and our subconscious is what drives our conscious mind. Whenever mm -hmm. we program into that, that's what we're going to go out here and we're going to do every day. I, when I'm sitting there and I'm working with my hands, something that I've done for 10 years, I'm thinking about everything else off of them because my subconscious is programmed my conscious mind to know how to do that all the time. Yeah. And that's that. <clears throat> that programming that we have put into ourselves, it feels good to go out here and, and get that high. It feels good to go out here and chase that lick. Mm -hmm. It feels good to be with these loose women. You know, yeah. you have to start with, who am I? You have to start yeah. with reprogramming yourself at, at the subconscious level and let the Holy Spirit come out of you and guide you to be what turns into your conscious yeah. behaviors. It's important to, to, to tell yourself all the time. My life is not falling apart. It's coming together. I am a wonderful person. Right. I am intelligent. I am the light. I yeah. am amazing. Yeah. I am valuable. I'm worth being loved because you are worth being loved. Your addiction might be telling you right now that you're not worth being loved and that the, this thing that you've got is what's going to keep you safe and what's going to keep you happy, but it's not. And there's no reason to be out there on your own believing that and feeling like that when you don't have to be. There's people out there that can teach you and that can guide you. There's books out there that yeah. can teach you who you are and can give you an entirely different way of living to get you away from that misery that you're in. Because I promise you that thing that you have, that devil you have, is not what you think it is. And it's right. only going to destroy you. Right. You know, if you want something different, right. just start thinking different and go get it. You will do what it takes to be that thing that you want to be if you believe that you deserve it. And if you believe it in your heart, that that's what you want, you go after yep. it. Yep. And then, you know, I also, I'm, as you're talking, I'm thinking about like what, what it said in conversations with God too, is uh, what the acronym for fear was and it's false evidence appearing real. <laughs> and it's like, everything is like, that's going on in here is either in the past, which is a memory and it's not happening or anything in the future that you're worried about or have anxiety about or, or depressed about or, or whatever that feeling and emotion is, is in, in the future. And that's an assumption. Mm -hmm. So like the only time is like what's happening is right now in this moment. That's it. Like there's no other way to understand that. And the more that you try to understand that, you go back into fear, mm -hmm. which is in that past memory or in that assumption, and you're out of the time mm -hmm. because the time is now. And it's like, dang, man, like, so I can, uh, I can dissolve all the fear and go right into love by just being in this moment. Mm -hmm. Right now, right here. Because all everything else is false. Mm -hmm. Anything that I'm scared of is false. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It's not real. There is no right reality here. in That's it. That's it. Yeah. The only thing real is love. Mm -hmm. And that is the reality of things. That is ex exactly it. Uh, yeah. People people get caught in that. They're, they're looking so far to the future and, and, and they're trying to get there by looking to the past from that experience that they forget. That the only thing that you have, the only thing, thing in existence is who you are and where you are right now in this moment if you're trying to get to the future looking to the future it doesn't even exist so how can you draw right. any information or anything from that to get there right you're looking to the past with experiences that have taught you things and those lessons are wonderful you need to grasp those and use those to get where you're going but the past doesn't exist anymore either the only thing that we have is right now this moment yeah and any fear any negativity anything that is keeping you from loving yourself and doing what you need in this moment to make the next moment even greater, it only exists right here. Yeah. If you stop thinking and look around you, you will see that nobody's telling you yeah. you're not good enough. Nobody's telling you you can't do this. Yeah. You are. You know, there may be people out there that are, you know, haters or whatever you call them, but those people are just act, they're acting out of their own fear. Yeah, absolutely. You, you need to, which is theirs. The, which is theirs. Yeah. It's right here. It's their own yeah. fear. They're trying to project that onto yeah. you because they're, they, they may be afraid for you. I don't know. Um, so what is important is for us to understand and embrace that this moment is the only thing that exists and everything in this moment right now, if I look around me is okay. In my mind, there's plenty of fear, but I need to conquer that with love, love of myself. Know that God loves me exactly yeah. how I am. All of my, what I consider to be flaws and all of what I consider to be, you know, wrong thinking or, or, or not, I'm not smart, whatever it is. I need to conquer, conquer that with the love. And I can start with the promise that God gave me. I love you exactly how you are. Yeah. Every hair on your head is counted. 
everything that you're ever going to do. I know it and I accept it and I love you yep. still the same. Your yep. blessings will not change unconditionally unless yeah. you change your blessings. Yeah. That, see, that's, that's a promise that, that, yeah. that I know God to have made. You are saved. You are blessed. Your blessings are guaranteed by the one supreme creator. We can change our blessings, though, if we turn away from them, yeah. if we let that fear and that negative thinking and all of those things destroy us and put us on a different path, that path to the darkness. That's what we're going to have. Yeah. But that's us changing things. So it's the same if you if you have this darkness that you've already opened the door and, and, and walked into and you're living in that. All you have to do is change your mind. Yeah, you got to open the door back. That's it. Like if, and it might not be that same door. Well, obviously, it's not going to be that same door. But you can walk on that path of wanting to open a new door. Amen. And voila, a magical door appears. You open it up, and there's all the light that you can see and handle. And then all that darkness goes away. Because one little speck of light kills all darkness. That's it. And so, you know, like... A lot of a lot of people struggle with depression and anxiety and and stress and all of this. And like, I don't have an answer. First off, I'm not a doctor. Yeah. I don't have a Ph.D. I haven't done any studies uh, like like hardcore studying on on the science of this or, or anything like that. Like I'm just speaking from my own experience of what I have gone through and because I have gone through. Uh, suicide attempts. I have gone through depression. I have gone through anxiety. I have gone through <clears throat> the struggle. You know, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this show or inviting guests on to, on here to share that if either I haven't been through that shit mm -hmm. or they haven't been through that. And we've all been through something. But it's that we recognize what we've been through. But like the 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 one little speck of light kills all darkness mm -hmm. you can see a little bit of light and in, in no matter how dark it is you can see that little bit of light but it can be light and you can't see the darkness like you can't you can't see you can you you can't see darkness in light because light overpowers mm -hmm. the darkness absolutely completely yeah i think that uh the i think that one of the biggest problems that people have um, is exactly that people letting other people tell them that they have a problem. There's something wrong with you. You yeah. have an issue that you yeah. need to work out. That is the worst thing that you can do to somebody. Number one, and allow somebody to do to you and believe. Yeah. Because like I said, just a minute ago, you are created in the likeness and image of your Lord. So that means that you are absolutely perfect, perfect. exactly how you are. You are perfect. And for you yeah. to believe anything other than that is for yeah. you, to, that's, that's blasphemy, yeah. is it not? So yeah. I think one of the first steps, now listen, I'm not saying that depression is not real because they, no, depression is. is very real. Yeah. It's a chemical imbalance in the brain that I don't understand and I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not trying right. to speak on it, but it, it really exists. But one thing I do know um, is that our thought process can literally change. There was a study that I read about, and I don't remember when or where. You have to Google it to, to see, but they took, uh, a, there was like 500,000 people that were interviewed, and it was on uh, a certain object. I don't remember exactly what that object was. We'll just say it was a vacuum cleaner. They, they, they took 500,000 people, and they asked them about this vacuum cleaner, and they narrowed it down to 200,000 people that loved that thing. I mean, it was something they swear by it. I love it. I would use it. I would recommend it to people. It has changed my life, this and that and the other. And they took those 200,000 people and they brought them into a convention in a, a football stadium. Those 200,000 people, when they started talking about this thing and they started, you know, discussing it and going over, the energy in there was so positive and so big, it literally changed the weather in that football stadium. Literally, and this is not a, a, an exaggerated or made up story. Feel free to go look it up and, and, and find. So what I'm saying is, yeah, your mind is powerful. Yeah, it's powerful enough that you can literally broadcast and change the weather. If there's enough of us on the same path with the same thought process and the same intention, broadcasting that same love from your heart, yeah. not trying to take anything from anybody, just always wanting to add to whatever you come in contact with. You can literally look yourself in the mirror over time and change the synapses yeah. and, the, and the, the, your, your, your makeup of your DNA to reflect what it is that you believe. Right. 
So for you to let anybody say that you're you have a problem or that you're there's something wrong yeah. with you, you start to reflect that because yeah. you believe it. That's what's in your heart. The yep. first thing that we need to do, I think, to conquer these kind of things, depression and all that kind of crap, is to stop believing there's something wrong with you. Right. You are absolutely perfect the perfect. way that you are. You, are you deserve love. You are valuable. You deserve all of the happiness in the world that you see out there and would so love to have. Yeah. Just start believing that you do yeah. and you will, you know? And it's so hard to explain this to somebody when they believe that they are not perfect. Yeah. Like like somebody that's going through their struggle right now, that's caught in addiction or caught in depression or caught in anxiety or or thinking about suicide, like they are believing that they're not good enough. And to tell them that they're perfect, they're like, I'm not fucking I'm not perfect. perfect. I've done all these yeah, things. Like, uh, I'm, yeah. And... But really, the reality of it is you are. That's not who you are. That's what you've done. That's what you've done. <laughs> Come that doesn't on. make you who you yeah. are. Your mistakes do not define yeah. you. We can't be perfect. We're never going to be perfect because we are trying too hard to be perfect. Yeah. If you just exist and yeah. be who you are the way that God intended you to be, yeah. then you're perfect. Yeah. The things that you do, those things are things that you need to embrace because it's like what well, we started this conversation with, the light and the dark. If you don't have that darkness, you'll never be able to appreciate your light the mm -hmm. way that you're supposed to. So stop saying, man, I can't believe I did that. Man, I really messed up. Man, I'm a messed up person. And start saying, yeah. those things made me better. I appreciate everything that I have done and I appreciate everything that I've gone through because yeah. it makes me who I am right now, which is not a bad person, right. which is a person that deserves love, yeah. which is a person that is capable of love. We are created and love we are yeah. love you know yeah that's so yeah yeah go ahead you know you i think that we need to quit identifying with certain things yeah big like time. and it's it, it you know in in the addiction community and in the programs like we are told to claim you know uh identify as an addict mm -hmm. and and like i have struggled with that like i i have struggled with with the problem of saying my name's Brian. I'm an addict, <laughs> you know, and, and I do that because it's what they do at the meetings. But like every time I do it, I cringe. Yeah. I'm like, dang, I am who I am. Right. I'm not this. I'm not I'm that. Not what I'm, I've done. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, I saw on an interview somewhere and they were talking about these kids in South Africa, I believe. And <clears throat> They would ask them, are you sick? Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, no, I'm not sick. I'm me. Mm -hmm. I have sickness with me. Right. And so it's like they don't identify with that sickness because they understand that if they identify with that sickness, that sickness gains strength mm -hmm. and becomes Absolutely. them. And so it's important to understand the power of the words I am and identifying with that. Very so so I only identify I try to only identify myself with what I truly want to be or 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 what I am. So I try not to identify myself with addiction. Mm -hmm. But I understand that I have addiction in me right. and there that disease is sick and twisted and it causes me to act out in that manner mm -hmm. but w the things that i try to identify with is like i am love mm -hmm. i am happy i am joy mm -hmm. i am the light that's right i am the truth i am the way i am all these things that i know that i need to change my thinking into mm -hmm. And the the negative uh, aspect of it, like like um, I I I have sickness with me. Mm -hmm. I have addiction with me. I don't identify with that. And so I am not like, an addict. I have gone through addiction. I have gone I through live addiction. with addiction problems. Right. I am not an addict. Like, I am a human being. I yeah. am love. I am peace. I am joy. I have addiction. Uh, right. I'm me, not depressed. Know? Yeah. I am depressed. No, I have been through depression. Mm -hmm. I have been through with anxiety. I have these different things. And, and, and everybody's not going to agree with that because, right. it's, you know, people have 
Now, let me listen. It almost sounds like, you know, we are saying that there's something wrong with that program or uh, I want to be clear. And I think I speak for both of us. That program works for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and it's a wonderful thing. Um, so there's nothing wrong. If that's what works for people, that's what people need to do. Yeah. Um, what we're saying is is something different. And we're talking about spirituality, not, you know, what not works a, not, to make you right. come away from addiction. Not a program. Um, yeah. Those programs and things are wonderful and they have saved millions yeah. of lives. Just like religion. Religion just, is wonderful. Religion is needed. Le- religion is what 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 God gave us or gave somebody to create, to find that path to the one and only source, Mm -hmm. you know, and then along that line, along the line, we have corrupted that religion and, and and made these certain rules and certain things about, about the way God is supposed to be. Well, Mm -hmm. God isn't supposed to be any, any tip like type of way. No, God is all things. Everything. God, is, God is that everything. is everything. God is well. God is all things. God is no thing. That's it. God is love. Is, yeah. And if if there's only two real things, emotions and feelings in the world, love and fear, mm-hmm. and love, love comes from fear, and fear never. Fear, fear doesn't go away from love. Mm-mm. They, they, they are together. Mm-hmm. You can't have love without fear. You can't have fear without love. That's it. So, so it's just God is all is all, and everything has to exist exactly the yeah. way it is. There's poles. There's always yeah the fear a of God and negative. There's always a dark yeah. a dark and a light. There's always you know a top and a bottom. There has to be all of these things. Yeah, that's what I tell people all the time. It's so simple. It's complicated. It's so complicated. It's simple. Yeah, because at the very core of everything, I believe I know that. I'm love. I want to express love and I do not want there to be hate and darkness in the world. And I want this and that and the other. But at the same time, on the other side of that coin, I have to embrace the darkness. I have to embrace all of those things that I don't so much agree with yeah. because without those things, this other thing that I enjoy and love and, and, and hold so dearly does not exist. Right. You know, so it, it's hard to live in that, in that balance. That's where we've got to find ourselves in the balance. It doesn't mean, that we have to accept or invite in the darkness. It doesn't mean we have to dwell or live in that place. We just have to understand that it has a purpose Embrace too. Embrace it. Yeah. Without that darkness, there is yeah. no, there is no love for the light. There is no way that the light can express itself to be life giving and all loving and all knowing and, and everything that that light is yeah. without that darkness. We cannot, fully embrace it for what it is. So everything has to be the way it is. I, I, right. A story, uh, it's something that I, I try to remind myself all the time. Like what we need to do, in my opinion, the way that we need to carry ourselves and operate is like we said, or like I said earlier, every situation that you're faced with, have the intention to only add to it, never take anything from it. Mm-hmm. And to <clears throat> always come from a place of love. This is hard because you see things on the news some man put a baby in a microwave and 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 nuked the baby and and everything in your being yeah. makes you want to hate that. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? You're meeting hate and darkness with more mm-hmm. hate and darkness. <clears throat> so then all of a sudden you're just compounding the hate and darkness. Yeah. And if you are a beacon of energy, always broadcasting, you're putting that hate and darkness yeah. out there into the universe the same way that man that did that awful thing did. Yeah. So. I have to look at it and I have to remind, I have to know and I have to remind myself and, and know in my heart that thing he did had a purpose. Yeah. That child may have grown up to be the next mass shooter that right. killed 365 yeah. people. Yeah. I don't know what God knows. Right. I don't understand the way God understands. Yeah. So for me to put my negativity onto that thing yeah. is only causing more Or to more hate chaos that or, to, and, yeah, yeah, or to think that that's wrong. Mm-hmm. To and, and really, you know, what what's... What's really wrong is to judge that. That's it. And I listen, I'm not saying I condone people putting babies in my right. ways. I'm not okay with no. that. But, you know, things happen the way that they're supposed to. And yeah. if I'm not yeah. blasphemous against my God, then I know that I have to just trust everything. Yeah. God is everything. God is in everything. Yeah. Like I said, every hair on your head is counted. Yeah. So that means he knows everything that you've done, everything you're going to do, everything that he's done, everything he's going to do. And he allowed that to happen. Yeah. He allowed that to happen for for a reason. For there was a purpose. 
Yeah. It took something out of the world that was going to turn into right. something worse than what the world already had in it. Yep. You know. Yep. I think in uh, I think it was Awaken the Species actually. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh, you know, with with his conversations with God, explained that everything happens from love. Mm. Like everything happens because somebody loved something. Yeah. Like, like that 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 murderer killed that person because mm -hmm. they loved something, or we did something because we loved doing that, mm -hmm. and and that's really really tough to like comprehend because. Because people are like, yeah, well, you know, like, let's, let's put, I'm going to put an example out there that's fucking horrible. Like these, the, the, the children that were molested and, and, and murdered and, and the, the woman that was raped in the alley and, mm -hmm. and like, and that's really hard to like accept and understand, but they did that because they, they loved something, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's so deep. And like that really, when I read that for the first time, it pissed me off. Mm -hmm. I was like, hold up. Like, no, no, <laughs> wait, that, no wait a what? second. Wait, what? But like, as I let that truth set in my heart, mm -hmm. instead of my mind, I started to understand the the way that that was put and what God was actually telling Neil in that book. Mm -hmm. And so I allowed that truth not to be my truth, but for me to experience part of that truth and accept that. It's hard to digest. It, it really is. is. It's very complicated, and yeah. and not everybody's going to mm. to accept that. And you don't have to. And I encourage you to to you know test the spirit of that truth, test that truth, and and allow that truth to be spoken to you, in order to understand your own experience. That's it. Because what's true for me and what's true for you might things. be totally two different things. And that's the divine dichotomy in that. That's right. You know, it, but but your your truth might be my my false and my lie. Exactly. And my truth might be the opposite to you. But that doesn't take that away from me as being true. Right and wrong are relative terms. Right. What's right to me may not be right to right. you. you know? and, and to say something is right or wrong is to judge something. Mm -hmm. And to say something, you know, it's like saying hot and cold. Well, you know, it might be cold here uh, today and it's like, what, 35 degrees. But in Antarctica, that's hot as fuck. Yeah, they, they would love to have 35 degrees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would be wearing shorts and swimming in that. So it's just a judgment of cold. Mm -hmm. So so instead of putting judgment, just it is. We We have... Throughout our entire history, we have created so many constructs for measuring things that people have got away from thinking on their own and they just follow what it is that they're yeah. told, to fo told to follow and believe what it is that they're told to believe. You know, that thing is wrong because there's a hundred people standing over here with picket signs saying it's wrong, but I don't even understand what it is that I'm agreeing with that they're saying is wrong. Yeah. And to be honest with you, if I think about it and I see the actual truth in it, I don't feel like it's that wrong. You right. Know? People have got away from and it's, you know, I have my opinion on uh, control and, and, the, and the way the masses are controlled and things like that and the purpose of it and all that. And that's a whole different conversation. Um, but, you know, we've been programmed. And, and if you look at, oh, my goodness, it scares the crap out of me. These these kids these days, the younger generations, the way that they're being programmed just and yeah. it seems like they're being dumbed down and yeah. to just be followers. Right. You know, everything is like this and follow that. Right. Share and subscribe and follow. Yeah. You know, it's, but nobody's Yeah, do know, it though. Yeah, you do it. You, I'm not going to tell you again. Yeah, you, you need to you need to at least follow. Listen, I, I would encourage you to take anything I say with a grain of salt and find your own information. Yeah. I believe what I believe wholeheartedly because it's right for me. Um now, make sure you follow the podcast and and you do all of that because that that's a fact and there's no right or wrong. It's it's right. It's right. But um, <laughs> yeah, please, yeah, yeah. But yeah, children do not watch this. This is for not yourself. for your tiny little ears. No, not at all. This is not. I think I dropped the f bomb more in this than they did yeah. in any movie I've ever seen. I don't know. Uh, I dropped the f bomb more than Too Short did in any you, song he's ever you've created. Got Samuel L. Jackson beat like. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think you might be walking the line, but you yeah. haven't got him yet. Yeah, I, mean, I think he still holds the record. I'll be there. <laughs> We're coming for you. Yeah, Mr. Jackson. So this is great, man. Um, you know, I, I do want to ask you the question because 
the understanding of higher power is extremely difficult, but it's so easy. Yeah. And, you know, I had my spiritual awakening, uh, my first spiritual awakening when I was incarcerated by going through this uh, who am I process mm -hmm. and, and reading certain literature and, and going through this. But like higher power. OK, so I want to know what everybody else wants to know. Who is your higher power? Mm. What is your higher power? That is a uh, that's another question. That's uh, it, it, to me, it's simple, um, but it's so simple. It's complicated. It's so complicated. It's simple, simple. Um, to me. Higher power is God is everything. Um, I, I, we touched on it a little while ago in conversation um, and. All right. The way that I, I usually try to uh, describe it is like, um, you know, if you if you're looking at an object, I, uh, this microphone, mm -hmm. it's solid in front of my face. But, yeah. you know, that's me seeing it from here. If I zoom in on that thing that I'm going to see that it's made of billions and billions of tiny little particles that mm -hmm. are in motion mm -hmm. so fast that they are creating that one solid yeah. mass. Right. Yeah. But if you look at people. We are made up of all of the same thing. If I zoom in on the microscope, I don't see this hand. I see all of the organisms yeah, cells, and everything that cells, makes this cell, right? Yeah. So if you think about that and, and what we're told by the Bible, that we are created in the likeness and image of our Lord, we are created exactly like Ooh. him as a reflection of him. Ooh. And you back up from what I consider to be us in the microscope when I yeah. see, we see us individually. Yeah, this we're is under the, we are We are right up on the microscope. If you back up from that and you see the solid mass that yeah. these organisms are creating, I believe that's where you see God. At. Yeah. That's why it says that you cannot see the face of God. You cannot see the face of God because we exist within what God is, which is everything. Yeah. We are the cells and the DNA and the organisms and the bacteria that make God what God yeah. is. If we zoom out, I don't know what he looks like. I don't know what, you know, what my imagination would be that he would look like is, just like us, you know, but, yeah. you know, huge, I guess. Um, I think that's that that's that's what it means when it says when everybody says that we are connected, all of us, everything is connected. I'm connected to the tree the way the tree is connected to me yeah. because we are all in this. We are all part of this being that is God. Yeah. You know, we there's, are. there's no solid mass yeah. here because we are up on it close yeah. enough in the microscope that we can't see what we are and what we make up. Yeah. And I think that's why it's important to love yourself as if you are God. Yeah. I think that's why it's important to take care of yourself um, physically, uh, spiritually. Uh, you know, if you are not taking care of yourself, then you are. If there's a sick cell in my body, it doesn't just hurt that yeah. cell. It hurts the entire body. Yeah. You know, that's like cancer. If you've got cancer in your lungs, it just does. It doesn't just harm your lungs and kill the whole body. Right. So if you are not taking care of yourself and if you are not loving yourself and we are not loving one another, then we are basically a cancer cell within God. Yeah. That is hurting God. Yeah. You know, I think that's what God is. I think God yeah. is everything. I think that everything that we see and we touch and we feel and we hear that is God. Yeah. That's why it's so important to treat things well. It's so important to take care of things. And that's why it's even more important to treat yourself well. It's even more yeah. important to love yourself. God is everything. Yeah. So so Jesus, uh, you know, I, I believe that Jesus was the most powerful teacher to really ever walk. You know, I mean, well, to say that he was the most powerful is really to put judgment that he was better than this and right. that. But but what he did teach was he said, do away with all the commandments, mm -hmm. all the laws, all of them are gone. There's only one, one law, and that's to love God with all your heart mm -hmm. and to love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. Now, this is this is what when I studied this, it really I was like, like mind blown. You know, I was like, so God didn't say I mean, Jesus didn't say. Love God with all your heart, mm -hmm. love yourself with all your heart, and love others mm -hmm. as yourself. Okay. If if that was the case, then that would have been put in there. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, for you sure. know, but but if you and God are are one, then you love yourself as you love God That's because it. God is part of you. It got the God is within you. 
And 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 then when you love others, you're loving others as you love God or God like within. And and you know, people are gonna get that twisted and and really, really twisted. They're gonna say, Oh, so now you're God? No, I'm I, this but yes, phys- I am. right. But well, this physical self and this mind isn't God. Mm-hmm. It's part of God. That's it. It it is is the light that's in me is that's that Christ. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the saving grace. That is that is what connects me to God. Is that light, and 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 I can't be separated. And and they the the Bible even teaches that like you can't be separated from my love. Mm-mm. It's it's not possible. It's not. And because you, we are one, we are connected. We are the Trinity. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's is God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What is that? Have you ever thought about what that is like? Oh the, man, yeah, I've, I've, absolutely. I've been asked, you know, all my mm-hmm. life. You know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit's three things that are one. One thing that's three, and da 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 yeah. blah blah. And nobody ever really has a definitive answer about what exactly that is. But I think that answer to that, my belief, the answer to that is uh, is evidence of what we're talking about. Yeah. Know? Because if you think about what the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are, it explains it in the book a lot. Um, you know, the first thought that you have about a thing, like when your son is born, your, your daughter is born, they hand you that baby. And that first thought that you have, what is that thought called? It's called your fathering thought. Yeah. So your thoughts. That yeah. is the representation of the father. Yeah. The son, you know, you, you love something so much and said, God so loved the world that he gave his only God mm-hmm. son, blah, blah, blah. You love your son so much. You give it to the world because mm-hmm. you think that thing that you're giving to the world is going to make everything so much better. But if I think and I love myself and I believe that my thoughts are wonderful and I want to give them to the world to help change the world, how am I going to do that? Through my actions. Right. So my actions are a representation of the son. Mm-hmm. And when you give your actions to the world, what happens is there's either either a consequence because it's been the wrong thing or there's a result of that action. And what you take mm-hmm. in to yourself through that result of that consequence creates and makes you anew, right? I think right. that that consequence or that result yeah. is the representation of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So if I believe that and I believe that the Bible tells me that I'm created the likeness and image of my Lord and all of the things that I've said a hundred times – then that means that I am God. Yeah. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are in me. And it says in the Bible, in the book of Timothy, fan into flame the gift that I have given to you through the laying upon of my hands. What does that mean to, to, to me, to you, to anybody? Well, to me, it means I was given these things, my thoughts, my actions, and the thing that that action is going to create to go forth into the world and be love, to be light, Mm -hmm. To be the things that I was created to be. God told me that I'm exactly the way he is. I am perfect the way that I am created. Not the way that I have created myself to be, but the way I'm created. Right. So love your neighbor as if you love yourself. Love God wholeheartedly. Love yourself wholeheartedly. Love your neighbor the same way you love your neighbor. We're all one and the same. Yeah. You know, we all have the same things inside of us. We all have the same heart. Our blood pumps the same way. Our heart, you know, we are the same thing. We are all connected. Yeah. So how can we not love one another? How can we not want to be that compassion to the world? You know, it's yeah. And I think that we've gotten so far away from that compassion. Um, You were touching on it just a few minutes ago. Um, I think that we have been like brainwashed, I guess, systematically into like a to objectify each other uh, through objectification. We have kind of been separated to where we don't see each other as human beings right. anymore um, because the world's has taught us since I, I know yeah. Um, yeah. to look at each other like objects. When we describe each other um, in passing, we don't say, Oh, that's Brian. We say, Oh, that's that white guy. Yeah. And I have oh, turned you into a yeah. thing in my mind and in another person's mind, you are that white yeah. guy. You are that thing. Which instead that of that's Brian. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it, if there's some kind of, you know, stigma or whatever on the term that I've used to describe you, you're no longer an individual that deserves compassion. You are a thing that deserves to be treated the way that I've been told that that thing needs to be treated. Yeah. We have stopped looking at each other like human beings that are 
capable of love and capable of compassion. Yeah. And that's what we were made to be like. And yeah. we have started looking at each other like things that deserve to be treated like things. Yeah. I think that's a, that's one of the biggest problems I had with the, with the mass, the, the coronavirus mass. Um, <clears throat> if when you're born, the very first thing that you recognize, our brains are, are, are programmed to recognize patterns. And the very first thing that you recognize is your mother's face, you know, mm -hmm. and that becomes the thought of love and comfort and, and, and joy and all of those things that a mother gives you is the first thing you're introduced to in life. Well, then they start taking our face away from us and calling us black guys and white guys and this and that yeah. and other. We have, no us, more, yeah. we have no more individual identity. We're not human beings. We are objects that are, are, are to be treated like ob objects and it has divided us. Yeah. More than anything. And, and, and the goal, I think, for those that it benefits was to keep us divided and to have us divided. Because if we all stand up right now today together and say, I love you and I will treat you no different than I will treat myself. And we start doing that. It's like we talked about earlier. The world changes. Yeah, the world changes immediately. Immediately. Yeah. No more problems. No more hunger. No more hatred. You know, no more. There's going to be the few that don't want to, but if the masses stood together and said that this is the way that we're going to do things, we're not going to hurt each other anymore. We're not going to take away from right. each other anymore. I'm going to love you the way that I love myself, no matter what, even if yeah. you hate me. You know, those, yeah, few, man, that, that those just, few that are left behind, they'd get weeded out real quick. Dude, we put their ass on an island. And, because it's, it's so easy, man. Like It really is. Like, it almost well, it's, makes me tear up. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Because it's just like, dude, like, <laughs> it's not complicated. It, just love each other. Like, it's not hard. Why do, why do people have to create and cause suffering and, 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 and wars and, and just pain on each other? And like, you know, as I'm saying that, it's like because it has to happen so that people can experience who they are. <laughs> it's so complicated. It's like, and, 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 and so, so it's like, it's dang, it's like, OK, I understand. Like, like we have to murder each other <laughs> so that we know that it's wrong or, or not even wrong, that it, that that life is valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to experience the depression so that we can understand, like, what happiness is. We have to to know what the opposite is, the, the yin and the yang and, mm -hmm. and the order and the chaos. And so like, really it's a beautiful thing mm -hmm. that the wars are happening, that the, the racism is happening so that we can understand how much more we need to be brought back together and not be so divided. I've heard all my life, um, from, I was raised by Southern women and that, you know, you hear them say things like sometimes uh, we're, we're going to have to have a misunderstanding, get an understanding, yeah. things like that. And uh, it's like <laughs> right now, I feel like where we are in the world, it feels like we are devolving. But it's shown to be true that before a great evolution, there is a devolution. Yeah. It seems like we go backwards. But what we're doing is we are looking the darkness in the face and we were starting to yeah. understand it better. Yeah. It doesn't seem that way because there's so much arguing and chaos yeah. and this and that and the other. But when two people are fighting about something that they're both passionate about, whether they admit it or not, you're going to learn something from that conversation, mm -hmm. no matter how heated and ugly it is. Mm -hmm. So the war. And if you don't, you'll experience it again. Right. Yeah. The war is something that we are going to learn something from no matter what. So the war in itself has no purpose. The lessons are going to come from the results and from, you know, the, the, the consequences of our bad decisions that got us in that war. There is something good to be had from all of these things yeah. that are going on. And I think that we are in a period of great evolution, to be completely honest with you. Um, it doesn't seem that way. There's so much in the media that is like, you know, child molestation and, and, and human trafficking rings and all that crap that they're they're showing us right now. But. As we're seeing it, it doesn't feel right because we know these things are wrong. We feel like we may be going backwards because it seems like there's so much more yeah. of it than there used to be. But it's that's not the case at all. We are just analyzing it yeah. and seeing it more than we used to. And that is forcing us to pay attention to what we don't like about it. Yeah. It's forcing us to learn about each other in ways that we would never have learned yeah. about each other if we didn't argue a little yeah. bit, if we didn't see each other's differences and how intelligent and how beautiful we are by engaging each other in an argument or a debate or whatever, we might not have learned the things that 
we, we might not learn these things at all about each other. Yeah. If we just stayed in our separate little corners and we were all nice to each other, we would never learn how yeah. to really coexist with one another because yeah. we don't understand each other. Yeah. I need to know how you're different and why you're different to understand, well, that's who he yeah. is as an individual. I need to understand that love is there's, there should be no reason. You just love for no reason. Like it's it, right. It, it's just the way that you, you that things are supposed to be yeah. you love because you love. Yeah. The only way to truly love something is to love with no expectation of return. Right. I love you because I love you unconditionally, period. Yeah. So when I see these things and I learn from these things, I learn how to coexist. And if I don't let my love go away and I don't let my light get turned off, then we yeah. actually grow and evolve together yeah. through our misunderstanding. You yeah. Know? Pure love asks nothing, demands nothing, mm-hmm. expects nothing. That's it. You know, and and just is. and I learned that from uh, from Neil Donald Walsh, man. Mm-hmm. Like I know I keep dropping his name, but no, but dude, is just you, those, that that man and his that series of books and all of the other books that he's got, a, yeah, life changing, yeah, life changing, yeah, it opened my mind. It, I remember when I found the series, yeah, I remember when I first found it, and I, I was in a place of chaos and turmoil in my life, and it, I remember reading it, yeah. and it was just like, yeah, whoa. So everywhere I go now. <laughs> Like County yep. Jail, I bought two sets of that book, that the book yeah. series, and I left it there. Yeah, I gave you know, and that's all. I always want to ask a question to see where a person's at because things aren't always for someone right. at that time. And I can always see if a person is you know, or if they're just like, oh yeah, it's just another yeah. kind of religious book. And I don't know. I want to give that to somebody that I know is going to consume it and help keep growing yeah. because we need the light in the world right yeah. now. The darkness has been the way it is for. You know, yeah. Since since existence, we need that light to outshine and brighten and 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 to create the world to awaken and evolve. Yeah, they say that our 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 the age right now, uh, uh, uh the state that the world is in, it you know, and you really ex- really touched on something that helped me understand something way more now. They say that we're coming into an enlightening mm-hmm. age. Yeah. Like the the awakening is mm-hmm. happening in more and more and more and more people now. But that is because that we are seeing such dark shit go on in the <laughs> world and in history right now that it's causing people to be like, whoa. Uh, like we're not oh, doing that anymore. Yeah, yeah, like no, like we're moving, we're growing right now as a as a, a world, as a species. Mm-hmm. And and that growth hurts, man. It's it like really it's it's like growing pains whenever you're when you're uh, I mean, I can only speak as a, a male because that's all the experience I remember, you know. But like when I was when I was a teenager and I would wake up, my legs would hurt. Mm-hmm. And like it was because my bones were stretching and growing. Right. And that's what we're doing as, as a species that's right exactly now is we are growing. And this is shit is it's painful. Cr- oh, man, it hurts so bad to see the news and be like, oh, my God, there's another school shooting or look at the war over there in Ukraine or look at what these evil people are doing. They're they're killing this and this and they're torturing this and there's a all this pain going on and like just like the bible teaches like we need to look at this with a smile on our face because this is what's waking our species up and causing us to become awakened and enlightened and in understanding Mm -hmm. and so like now you know like i'm looking at this i'm like Hell yeah, or heavens yeah, yeah you know what I'm it, saying? Come, like this it. is coming, like people are waking up and I'm excited for it because, you know, a, a, along this journey and along this spiritual path that has chosen me is like really like been difficult because I feel like nobody else is on this level. Mm. And, and, and like, I feel alone on it. I I know what you mean. And it's just like getting clean and sober. Like, it's like, damn, like there's nobody else doing this. Like I'm alone. I'm lonely doing this. Like I don't have any friends anymore. And (laughs) and like, uh, who do I, who do I, I consult in? And then like, I find people in a program and I'm like, okay, well, I can talk to them about what I'm dealing with, trying to stay clean and going through this sobriety. But then it's like I can't connect with them spiritually. Mm-hmm. 
And I'm like, dang, dude, you're and like, I'm just I'm searching for this bond and this relationship. And and like all along, like it's inside of me, That's it. you know, you stop searching. It's yeah. Right. It's not about the search. It's a, it's about the discovering and being in the moment. And so like, man, I can't tell you like how much this conversation has helped me. And like, I really hope that that this conversation helps you, too. Uh, and again, like I say this with every show, take what you need and leave the rest and whatever you need, use it to to develop your understanding of who you are and and, and give that away. Okay. Give this message away to somebody else, because what you're going to gain from this conversation or or the other podcast or the podcast to come what you're going to gain from that is going to be yours, your own experience. Mm -hmm. Like take it, use it, give it away. Do something. Take it, use it, give it away. Don't let it die. And the only way that you can give this away is by sharing what you learned because you're not going to some, whoever you give it away is not going to get it the same way that you got it. They're going to get it their own way through their own experience and with their own truth. And that's all that really matters. That's it. But man, I am so thankful the universe will align this up for us to to meet up again. And like I I didn't know if I'd ever see you ever again. And there's way more to your story and and your story is extremely powerful. The things that you've gone through and and we're going to have you back on the show. Um, and and I'm so, so glad that we could have the uh, higher power talk because that's a really sensitive subject. Like there's going to be parts of this conversation that we had that people are like, fuck it. I'm never watching this shit again. (laughs) And I really hope that you can get over it. uh, Feel some type of way about the things that I say. Because one thing that's encouraging to me is when a person feels some type of way, the hater, the (laughs) angle. That that yeah. means that I've I've sparked something inside yeah. them, and they care about something. Yeah. If you are if you're going to let something make you angry, or if you're going to let something make you want to have a debate, then you care about something. Right. I have sparked the love passion. inside of you, the yeah. compassion, the whatever inside of you that you want to react. So yeah. Please don't like what I say. Yeah. Please have a problem with what I say. Right. If you want to have a conversation or a debate with me. Feel free. Yeah. I am easily accessible and I would love to talk to anybody because I think the best thing that human beings can do for one another is to share information. You don't have to agree with my information. You don't have to like my information, but I will make you think. Yeah. And if that's the, the, the least that I can do for a person, I think that, um, that it's pretty life changing. You're, you're calling. It's your purpose. It. It's being lived out. So. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure. Awesome. Uh, anytime, I would, uh, I'd love to come back and have a conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this experience and, and being in the moment with us. Uh, we send you love, light, and peace. And if you are still suffering or know somebody that's suffering from addiction, please reach out to us. We do have resources. We do have tools. We do have th- people that know people that know people that want to help you. Uh, but all you have to do is ask for it. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall, you shall find. We love you. Thank you very much. 